Welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast with your host, Scott McMahon. Hi, and welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast, filmmaking freedom for the independent. What does that mean? Simply put, we all have the ability to make our films and sell them to the world without being dependent on anyone. But the real challenge lies in how do you get an audience, a large enough audience, to watch your film and pay for it? And can the money you make doing this earn you enough to make the next film and the next film and also provide you with a healthy, sustainable lifestyle for you and your family? It's quite a mouthful, but that's what we focus here on Film Trooper, and we're looking at ways to create that filmmaking freedom. Today's topic is what self-publishing a book taught me about selling films online. Film distribution is so fascinating to me because it's sort of the end game. And it's not really just distribution. It's really sales and marketing. What do you need to do in order to market or convince someone to buy your film? And what are the principles of selling anything? So for today, we'll focus on how self-publishing a book can be applied to when it comes time to sell your movie online. What is film today? I mean, one way to look at it, it's nothing more than a digital product just in the same vein as music is a digital product or art pieces and books. And for some time now, Amazon has created an online marketplace for selling books. And they've opened this whole marketplace up to all sorts of truly independent writers to sell their work. An independent author can sell their book alongside a New York Times bestselling novel published by one of the main book publishing companies. It's just simply amazing. And then over on iTunes, independent musicians can upload and sell their music alongside major recording stars. And now filmmakers can do the same on both iTunes and Amazon. Since independent authors have had a head start on this whole self-publishing thing before us filmmakers, I wanted to know what it takes to write a book and sell it on Amazon. And that's what I did. I decided to write a book and use some of the marketing and sales tactics that have been taught to me by those who found success in this arena. Now, why write a book and not just make a film for this experiment? This is how fast things are moving. At the time, Amazon hadn't opened their Amazon Instant Video Marketplace up yet to any independent filmmaker. So at that time, when I was starting to write the book, you could only sell DVDs through their subsidiary company, CreateSpace. But you could not sell on their VOD EST side of things unless you had an aggregator or a distribution deal. But until now, that totally has changed since then. And we'll get into that more in a little bit later in the podcast. Also, writing a book was much more cost-effective than making a movie. It was cheaper, (laughs) obviously. So what was the book? It was How to Make and Sell Your Film Online and Survive the Hollywood Implosion While Doing It. Now, at the time that I started writing the book, Steven Spielberg had been quoted as saying that there's going to be an implosion, Hollywood blockbusters will be going crashing into the ground, and that will change the paradigm. It doesn't appear that prediction will come to pass just yet, but there is still time. Regardless, it was an interesting starting point as to explore and dig deeper in the other business models that the truly independent filmmaker could follow to become completely independent of the Hollywood business model, you know, no matter what happens to Hollywood. So the research for the book highlighted what it was like and why I made a feature film for $500 without a crew, and then shared what worked and what didn't work in the marketing and selling of that film afterwards. But mostly, the book is a curation and research and assembly of how all these online entrepreneurs sell and sold digital goods with great success. If I pare down the idea that film is nothing more than a digital product, how can it be applied to similar systems that work for these online entrepreneurs? Again, this book was designed to flip the perspective on what it means to sell an independent film in today's new marketplace, this digital landscape. This is actually a perfect place to interject how you can pick up a copy of the book. (laughs) I know, but if you're going to learn about marketing and selling, this is one tactic you can use. Um, We were talking about the book, so now I can interject sort of what they call in the podcast world a mid-roll. So it's like a mid-roll, you know, promotion. And if you're interested in getting the book, just head on over to survivetheimplosion.com for all the details. The book is available in paperback as a Kindle ebook and an audiobook. And you probably heard me say before that you can get the audiobook for free when you sign up with Audible for the first 30 days. Again, just go to survivetheimplosion.com and you'll get all the details. Okay, now let's dig into the step by step process of what it took to self publish this book and what tactics can be used to sell your film online. Please forgive me, I'm coming over a head cold, obviously, in the the new year, and you get the holiday sickness, but I will power through this episode, and we're going to dive into it right now. So 
When I started to write the book, I was using Microsoft Word on the Mac, but I switched over to Apple's Pages program halfway through, as it was easier for me to export the document file as a .epub file format, which I could easily open on my iPad via the iBooks app for, you know, testing and seeing if I'm formatting it correctly, and just, you know, it was easier, the workflow was easier that way. With Microsoft Word, I had to do a few other steps to get it formatted in to be easily viewed and tested on my smartphone or iPad. And with Pages, I was also able to work off the iCloud, um, allowing me to work on the file on my desktop or my laptop or my iPad. I usually actually like to create documents using Google Docs because I do enjoy the cloud convenience of switching between, you know, whatever, you know, computers in front of me. But I always have access to all my uh, documents. Um, but Google Docs at the time didn't have an export option that was really set up for ebook compatibility because um, you still had to do a lot of other extra steps and sometimes the formatting would get all messed up. This is why I chose Pages to write the book with. I don't want to make it sound like writing a book was easy because it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I've never done this before, so I, at some point I realized I just needed to buckle down and stop working almost on anything else and just finish the book. I had to really power through it in you know, several months. But once I did, it was a huge, huge monkey off my back. Now came the real writing process, or the, you know, the real writing, which was the editing process. I mean, I guess I could have hired an editor to go over the book, but this was, you know, self-publishing mastery at its finest. <laughs> so since I already was producing a weekly podcast, I decided to record an audiobook version, but knowing that the process in doing so would allow me to edit the book. So I was recording each mission. That's what I call them. I call them missions instead of chapters in the book. Anyhow, I was recording each chapter, and there were many times where I would stop and ask, like, well, who wrote this garbage? This, this doesn't even make sense. Then I would correct, it, uh, you know, correct what I needed to be corrected on the paper that I was reading from, and then I would jump back over to the computer and make the corrections and changes in the pages document. So it was twofold. I was recording at the same time my audiobook version, at the same time editing as I was going along. I mean, eventually I got through it, and then I would have these raw recording files of the reading of my book that I would have to edit, you know, later on. Now, the audiobook took a while to edit and mix, and so, you know, because I have to get rid of a lot of, like, heavy breathing or the uh, ums and the lip snacks, smacks. Lip snacks, lip snacks would be actually more interesting. Anyhow, there are a lot of things you have to do that in terms of, you know, polishing up the audio mix. But anything, I powered through it, and I finished the product, and was ready for publishing. Now, let's take a look at what it takes to self-publish on Amazon. You know, Amazon is, is, is amazing. If you want to publish your book as a hardcover or a paperback, you can sign up and utilize their CreateSpace service. I made a decision that I only wanted to offer a paperback version in the physical good side of things. So what you do is you sign up and create a CreateSpace account. Just go to createspace.com. That's createspace.com. Again, everything I'm going to tell you is available in the show notes if you just go to filmtrooper.com forward slash 125 because you know everything's written out and all the links are there. So on top of just listening to the podcast... You know, you don't have to take notes, like, like if you're driving your car or running, you know, or walking the dog or anything like that. Anyhow, so you go to createspace.com. You go through the step-by-step -step sign-up process, which includes adding your bank information and tax information because, you know, Amazon's going to need to send you your earnings someplace, right? With CreateSpace, you can self-publish not only books, but music on CDs and films onto DVDs. And now, which wasn't available at the time I was writing the book, CreateSpace has a link to their Amazon Video Direct upload service, but we'll get into that later. So CreateSpace, still at this time, for some reason, only offers on-demand printing for standard definition DVDs. Blu-ray is not offered for some reason. I wish it was, but they're just not doing it. CreateSpace is an on-demand printing and publishing service. This means you don't have to spend money on printing your books or your music CDs or your DVDs in large bulk quantities and have all those boxes stored in your garage and you have to, you know, try to get rid of inventory. The difference is the power of on-demand publishing is that when a customer buys your book, CreateSpace will print, package, and ship a copy out to the buyer. It's just amazing. So once I had uploaded all the necessary document information, including a book cover that I designed in Photoshop, and CreateSpace gives you all these templates for book covers and with size dimensions, 
So I just open one of those templates in Photoshop and start designing uh, my own cover. You know, if, if you can do that, um, uh, that's what I did. Or you could send it to a designer and they could do it you know, for you. I uploaded all the files from my book and did a few tests through the create space. There's a process where you can test to see how the formatting is going before you hit, you know, final print and publish. And I got the approval from create space and I was ready to go. So as soon as that happened, I made sure that to price the book at the least amount so it wasn't, you know, spending, you know, more money than I need to. And the, the least amount that I could, you know, price it at was $14.95, um, I believe. I paid that amount and then within t uh, two days, actually. So, you know, I went on the Amazon, it was there, and I ordered the book. And in two days, I had a paperback version of my book at my doorstep. It was just crazy. It's amazing to hold in your hand a real book, you know, that you wrote. It's It's tangible. It made it real. And it was... You know, I mean, I actually ordered a few other copies and, you know, gave it to my, my, my family and, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Your, your family just kind of proud of you and like, oh my gosh, you, you wrote a book. You, you're an idiot. <laughs> so initially I thought I would only be writing this book actually for the Kindle ebook market. I just thought I was just going to do a digital product. That was the whole goal, not actually make a physical product. So a lot of my testing was to see how the book would look on an iPad or a Kindle e-reader. Now, Amazon has another subsidiary company called KDP, which stands for Kindle Direct Publishing, and that's located at kdp.amazon.com. Again, don't worry about writing any of this stuff down. Just go to the show notes over at Film Trooper on this particular episode, and this is episode number 125. Again, you'll have to sign up and create an account with KDP to add in your banking and tax information, and KDP accepts different formats that will convert your like PDF or your Word doc file into the correct Kindle format. But I felt that it, it might be better to have control over how that was converted. So I took my .epub file format. Again, the .epub format was exported out of the Apple Pages as it was native to the iBooks app. But now I needed to take that .epub version and make a .mobi file format. All confusing, I know. It's a .mobi, and this is the format that Kindle Books takes. Now, there's a free converter program called Calibre, spelled C-A-L-I-B-R-E, um, that is, it's used for a lot of different things in terms of the um, ebook, you know, realm. But it made it really easy to convert the EPUB file format to the .mobi file format, and for me to test it out prior to uploading it to KDP for the Kindle um, you know, Amazon submission of my book. So everything was set up. I filled out all the description and metadata and set my price within the KDP account, you know, because when you upload your file, there's all these step-by-step -step things you got to go through. And I hit publish. And within like an hour, my book was up on Amazon for sale. Again, it's just amazing. You know, for physical like hardbacks, uh, copies or hardcovers or paperbacks versions, you can use CreateSpace, you know, that's a Amazon company. Or for the Kindle ebook, you know, version, I had to use their other service called KDP uh, for Kindle Direct Publishing. And then you're like, well, what does Amazon use for the audiobook version? Amazon has a partnership with another service called ACX, which stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange. It's located at acx.com. Again, you sign up, you create an account, you put your bank information, your tax information in order to sell audiobooks through ACX. There is a preferred naming convention and format that ACX requires your audio files to be in, so I just cleaned up my export files and fit into their requirements. There were things like you needed a sample audio file, um, as well as an opening and closing credit, as well as chapter breakdowns. I uploaded my MP3 files as directed, uploaded the album artwork. Again, I had designed the book cover in various formats for the paperback, the Kindle ebook, and now I just had to redesign it for the audiobook, you know, specifications. I hit publish and in hours my audiobook was available for purchase on Amazon. It's just this is crazy. Now let's go over a few things like pricing, royalty percentage, and what eventual marketing strategy was used and how it could be applied to selling your film online. Selling the paperback version of the book, I couldn't go any less than $14.95 price point due to the cost of the on-demand printing. So I could price the book at any, anything higher than that, up to a point. I think it's like, you know, you can go over like $200 or something like that. For the Kindle ebook, I could price the book at any price I wanted, um, 
then there's an asterisk, and we'll get into that later. Like, ding, you know, something I'll talk to you about in a sec. But for the audiobook, I had no control over the pricing. ACX automatically priced the audiobook at $14.95, and that's dependent on how long your audiobook is. My book runs about seven hours in listening time, but other popular novels would span over like 35 hours of listening content. This is why those audiobooks cost upwards of like $49.99. The royalty split for the paperback book is $35.65, meaning that Amazon takes 65% of the sale and I get 35% of the sale. The Kindle ebook version has the same split. Amazon gets 65%, I get 35%. With ACX, the audiobook version, Amazon takes 75% and I get 25% of the sale. And you might be asking like, will this happen to me on the film side? Not quite and we'll get into that in a little bit here, uh, a little deeper. Amazon offers a lot of services, and they make their money in so many different ways. I don't know if you remember, they used to just sell books online that would be shipped to you anywhere you lived. Well, now they make most of their money from their server service. Uh, pretty much all major companies pay Amazon to host their servers for their company needs. It's a pay-as-you-go model. In fact, all of Amazon's digital content that is sold to the world resides on their server or service. Uh, it's called like Amazon Web Service, AWS. In fact, Netflix pays Amazon to store and stream all of their digital content. So that's how big Amazon's uh, service is. And it's actually making more money than any other division of Amazon's. So back to their original you know, creation of selling books online, Amazon is a marketplace. It's also a search engine. So when someone searches on Google, they are trying to find an answer to a question. No one really is searching on Facebook because you're being fed information or you're being fed misinformation. The mindset of someone on Facebook or YouTube is to absorb free content. It's very hard to switch a user's mindset from getting free stuff to suddenly paying for something. But when anyone is on Amazon, they are searching for things to buy. They are in a different mindset and they already have their credit card information in the system. So it's just everything's just one click away. The reason that Amazon can take such a large payout is that they own the marketplace. Now here's a side note. I opted to sell my book on other platforms such as gumroad.com. Uh, this allowed me to try out some differenting marketing stuff with my own website to try to make, uh, you know, take a, a larger cut. But the problem was I couldn't generate as much traffic as Amazon was doing for me. Also, a potential customer would have to enter their credit card information on a new platform like Gumroad and that created more barriers to the sale process. Seeing something on sale in Amazon made everything more official. Now, selling a Kindle ebook version on Amazon, you have actually options uh, to make a greater percentage. You can decide to sell your ebook exclusively through Amazon and get a 70% royalty return instead of the 35%. Now, that sounds much better, right? So, however, you can't sell your book any higher than $9.99. But then again, you'll earn about $7 per sale this way. On top of that, once you agree to these terms, Amazon has a whole set of marketing tools that can help you, you know, get your book better placement in their marketplace. I didn't do that um, because, you know, I'm not that smart. <laughs> really what was happening, I was trying to test out some other marketing things by selling directly through my website. It worked okay, but in hindsight and moving forward, the next book I publish, I will definitely utilize uh, this offer instead, like make it part of the Amazon ecosystem and sell it for $9.99 or, you know, within that range and uh, work, you know, the Amazon system better. This only actually applies to the Kindle ebook version. The physical paperback version still remains at 35% royalty payout and the audiobook you know, prices are firm and their, their revenue and their royalty split is firm. Speaking of the audiobook, ACX automatically made my book available in Audible and iTunes. If you can't produce your own audiobook recording, you know, ACX actually offers this service too. So if you're a voice actor, you can actually apply to become one of the talent that gets called up to read a book. If you're a writer, you can hire and have ACX produce the audiobook version for your works. I just happened to have the equipment and I was already running a podcast and I make, you know, a part-time living as an actor. So I thought it was, th that was my unfair advantage to be able to do my own. But for a lot of writers or other people, th they'll need to hire some other, 
you know, service to do this. So ACX provides all of this if you want to, you know, publish your audiobook version of your book and they'll take care of it, finding the right, you know, voice talent and doing all the uh, producing for you and recording and, you know, publishing. Okay, so those are the technical details of writing and self-publishing a book uh, for Amazon or through Amazon. Let's jump into the marketing and launch plan of the book and how all of this can be applied to selling your film online. Here's the simplest game plan you can apply when it comes time to launching any digital product, be it a book, a music album, or a film. The experts that I follow recommended that I form a book launch group. You invite 100 people to join your private launch group, and this is what you need this launch group to do. You need them to buy your book, your digital product, or your film product. Two, you need them to leave a rating and review for your book or your film product. We'll get into that. And then number three, you need to have them spread the word about the book to other people, the book slash music slash film, whatever the digital product is. What I did was to offer the book for free to the first 100 people who would automatically be added to this special launch group. I shared with this group updates of each chapter so they could read the book ahead of time and knowing that they'll be ready to leave a rating and review the moment that I was able to launch the book as a whole to the market. The thinking here was that I didn't want to just write the book, finish it, and then push it onto my launch group and then start urging them like, oh, quick, read it, read it, read it now, read it now, and then leave a rating and review as soon as possible. I needed to you know, have them you know, with me along the journey so they knew exactly what the book was about so that when it was finally released to the marketplace, I could have those ratings and reviews ready to go. So, you know, even though I asked them to spread the word about the book, I didn't really have a great system in place or any really great incentives to, uh, of a way to follow up with them to see if they had or hadn't, you know, spread the word. And even though I had over 100 people in my launch group, only 34 people left a rating and review for the book. I mean, you really have to follow up with each person and give them incentive to leave a rating and review. I mean, you really have to work at it. And some of these people were my own family. <laughs> So it reminds me of this story where a filmmaker had rented out a theater um, space to premiere his film. He had spent several weeks promoting and asking everyone he knew to come and join him for the premiere. And he was worried that he was overdoing it in his promotion, like he was annoying all his friends and family. But finally, the night of the premiere comes, and he was outside the theater in the theater lobby, welcoming everybody coming into the specific theater. But while he's in the lobby, he greets one of his oldest and dearest friends, and he's, you know, it's just saying, thank you so much for coming. I, you know, it's, it's, I've been working on this for so long. Thank you. I really appreciate it. But his friend's reply was like, what are you talking about? What are you doing here? Um, you know, you have a film premiere? Like, you didn't even know. I didn't know that. I was, I'm here to watch Avatar. So the moral of the story is, even though we think we're over-promoting and annoying everyone, all of our friends and family, we're really not, you know? <laughs> we're really not, so don't worry about that. Now, back to our story. Because I had tried selling the book through my own website initially using Gumroad, those customers would then have to go back over to Amazon and leave a rating and review. I just created too many barriers for people to leave a rating and review. And so, you know, moving forward with my next project, I'm, I won't do that. Well, what I didn't know was that Amazon tags each review with either a verified purchase or not. So meaning that, like if you read the reviews, there's like this little yellow tag for everyone who actually purchased it through Amazon, and then they tag that review as verified purchase. Now, actually, some companies will pay false reviews, and there's a service out there that will scan Amazon to help consumers determine if the reviews are legitimate or not. Uh, so you can imagine how much better that my, or healthier my reviews would have been if they all had the verified purchases next to them. Because majority of the people got the book for free or they paid for it via Gumroad, you know, and not specifically through Amazon. Here's what I should have done. I, I should have made the book exclusive with Amazon and sold the book as low as 99 cents for the first 100 customers in my book launch group and urged them to leave a rating and review. Since I was selling the book through Amazon, and not my website, I would have gotten more reviews and had all of them tagged with verified purchases. Um, and I'll do that next time in the next book. Again, by offering them at the most discounted price, like one buck, uh, then that, it doesn't matter. I mean, Amazon, a verified purchase of a dollar is the same thing as a verified purchase of 
this is what I'll do next time. Then after I made the first hundred sales that went through, I would increase the price up to like $9.99 and make you know my 70% royalty that way. Now here's how this can be applied to selling your film online. iTunes and Amazon are great marketplaces for selling your film online. Both platforms work in the same way in terms of ratings and reviews. If you want to get your film onto iTunes, you pay an aggregation service like Bitmax or Distributor a flat fee to encode your film and to submit it to iTunes. This fee can range anywhere between like $800 to $1,500 per film. But you'll still want to organize a launch group. The launch group of say like 100 people will get the film at a discounted price. Have those people pre-order your film on iTunes at the discounted price and leave a rating and review for the film on iTunes. If you make enough noise and traction with pre-orders and reviews, you'll be able to get your film listed in the new and noteworthy section when the film comes out on the iTunes uh, search page. Your film could be listed alongside Hollywood films with big stars and distribution companies. It's happened before. So if you do get on the new and noteworthy section, then milk it for all it's worth by driving more people to buy your film by showing that it has legitimacy. What you're trying to do is get enough traction and sales going on in those first few weeks of the release that the organic search engines and the organic the organization of iTunes will take over and start pairing your film with other popular films. Even better, if you can get the launch group to leave a review in Rotten Tomatoes and maybe even get a few certified news publications to review your film, then actually iTunes will grab that data and add it to your film's description. If you notice, you know, iTunes um, utilizes two review systems. One that's part of their iTunes general ratings review system, but they also, for movies, will grab what Rotten Tomatoes, um, you know, response is. So I'll do some more research on what it takes to get your film reviewed effectively on Rotten Tomatoes for like another podcast. But if you can do that, that gives you a better fighting chance to have success on the iTunes platform. Now, with Amazon, it's all about IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. Uh, we all know about IMDB because we're all trying to get IMDB credits, right? Well, Amazon owns IMDB, and IMDB has become sort of a search engine where people are finding films. Uh, I know that a few people have found my film, The Cube, through IMDB and have purchased it that way. So it's really kind of crazy. So you want to register your film's info and get everything set up on IMDB and then get your launch group to leave a rating and review at that platform as well. So you want your 100 people not only leaving a ratings review in iTunes and Rotten Tomatoes, but you now need them to also leave a ratings review over at IMDB. You may need to offer the same launch group a discounted price for your film on Amazon too. So this group is being instructed to pre-order your film on iTunes and Amazon at the same time. But again, if you're offering them you know, the discount, like a 99 cents price, it shouldn't be such a big deal. The great thing about Amazon is that you don't need to pay an aggregator anymore to get your film listed and sold in the Amazon Instant Video Marketplace. Uh, you did, you know, not too long ago, but just recently, you know, Amazon has changed the rules for that. You can either go to createspace.com or go to Amazon Direct Video to sign up and submit your film directly. You may need your launch group to leave another set of reviews in the Amazon page as well. So, again, just recap, this same launch group will have to pre-order your film in iTunes and Amazon at a discounted price, leave a rating and review in iTunes directly, leave a ratings and review on Rotten Tomatoes, leave a ratings and review on IMDb, and leave a ratings and review on Amazon directly. <laughs> it's a lot to ask, so you really got to make sure your gifts and your giveaways and your prodding is uh, is consistent and polite and just hustle it uh, as much as you can to get as many ratings and reviews and sales and pre-orders you can uh, prior to the film being released. The strategy behind all this is that in both iTunes and Amazon, what you're trying to do is take full advantage of the initial release of your film to generate as many sales as possible with as many reviews as possible. When the honeymoon ends and, you're, and you hope that your legwork will have sparked the organic search tools for both iTunes and Amazon to pair your film up with other Hollywood films that are similar in genre and tone, 
This is a way that you can still try to make sales down the line when someone is looking to rent or buy a film on either one of those platforms. And you can also capitalize on the bragging rights of your film if it was listed, you know, for weeks, you know, next to a film that was starring Jennifer Lawrence. I've seen this happen before. We're like, oh my gosh, our film got, you know, listed as new noteworthy on iTunes and it's selling right next to a film with Jennifer Lawrence. That's a huge bragging right and you definitely want to take advantage of that. Here's another interesting thing that I learned about selling a self-published book. Since the audience I serve is primarily podcast listeners, that's you listening to this podcast, the sales of my audiobook have far outweighed the sales of my paperback or my Kindle ebook versions. And it makes sense if you think about it. If I had a popular blog where my audience spent most of the time reading my writings, reading my work, then I could see how those sales of my Kindle ebook and paperback would be higher. Now, how does this apply to selling your film online? Well, I think audience are more willing to pay for your film if it resides on platforms that, are, that they're used to watching movies. These would be platforms like iTunes through their Apple TV or through Amazon when they're watching through their Amazon Fire Player. And Netflix would be another, but that's a whole other beast that we'll have to get into at a later time. Marketers will do surveys to determine where customers are watching content. And if they are watching it on iTunes or Amazon, then you need to get your product onto those platforms. If you have a horror film, then maybe you put it on Shudder, which was acquired by AMC Networks. But you just have to do your research to figure out where your film needs to be that makes the most sense. Again, my listening audience or the, the, the bulk of my audience for Film Trooper are podcast listeners. So it made sense that they would want to buy and listen to the audiobook version because they're probably listeners and not necessarily readers. Bottom line, no matter the platform you choose to sell your film on, the strategy of using a launch group for pre-orders and reviews is vital. Now, how are the results of my book? Well, the book has made over $10,000 in sales to date, and if you were someone who bought a book, then little did you know you were part of my version of my crowdfunding campaign. Instead of doing a traditional 30-day or 60-day crowdfunding campaign, I opted to write a book and sell that as a good in the marketplace. The money earned from this product will go to fund my next film. Most crowdfunding gifts or giveaways are like t-shirts, copy of the script, or a thank you note. But I really wanted to create a real product, and hopefully a product that had a lot of value to you, if you listen to it, or value to the marketplace. I made my money back and with a little profit from selling my first film online. My book has earned way more than I expected, and I'm hoping that my third product will you know, earn me even more money. And I want to continue to increase my knowledge and sales as I keep going along. So I will keep you posted. Anyhow, I hope this episode was super helpful in your journey as a filmmaker. And, you know, I have to ask because I have to beg for this one. I mean, this whole episode is around this idea of leaving a ratings and review. Will you please leave a rating and review for me over on iTunes for the podcast? Now, all you have to do is go to filmtrooper.com forward slash iTunes, and that will take you to the iTunes page where you can leave a rating and review. And if you don't know how to leave a rating and review, then just go to the show notes, and I will leave a video at the end showing you how to do all this stuff. Again, that's, this is episode number 125, so it's filmtrooper.com forward slash 125. All the show notes, everything I talked about, all the links and everything that we talked about in this episode will be there, as well as a video showing you how to leave a ratings review. That's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Film Trooper podcast, and I will see you next time. Film Trooper, filmmaking freedom for the independent.